Welcome to Film Freaks. This is Justin Lou Allen. And Eddie Williams. And tonight we're going to be doing another retrospective of a very popular franchise that actually started out way earlier than, than expected. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Hannibal Lecter franchise, which uh, for those of you who are actually, for those of you who are, we don't know this was these were actually a series of books that were that were made that were by a guy named Thomas Harris. Did it have any kind of recollection of being part of Ed Gein inspiration? Um, Buffalo Bill was yeah. yeah. South Lambs Buffalo Bill's character was based off Ed Gein. Okay, so um, basically this is a series of films that all were adapted from uh, the character of Hannibal Lecter in the different books, which started out with. Uh, Red Dragon, which was uh, adapted as a movie back in the late 80s called Manhunter, uh, which was directed by Michael Mann. And this is technically the first one that featured Hannibal Lecter, but the the one that everyone currently knows nowadays is Silence of the Lambs, which brought him into mainstream. Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins' yeah. role. But for those you who don't know, Brian Cox actually played the character in Manhunter. And if you don't remember Brian Cox, he's the guy you... You formerly really know him famous for the Super Trooper films. Yeah. He's the main sheriff, the old dude. Believe it or not, and he also played the raunchy dude in Ringer, which he yeah. was hilarious in. People kind of know him lately as more of the dark humor or funny comedy guy, but he actually was Hannibal Lecter. People don't know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And basically, the first one we'll get into is Manhunter, which was came out in 1986. And... Uh, Starred, uh, it starred uh, the, the William, William Peterson, Peterson in an early role. Yeah. And this is, if you remember him, he was from CSI and also Fear Grissom. as, yeah. as uh, Will Grissom. Yeah. Yeah. And who's the basically uh, an FBI agent who is currently in retirement. Uh, and after that, it's kind of hinted that he had a history of Hannibal Lecter in the past because of an incident. But yeah. basically, there, this film deals with a t killer known as the Two Fairy. Yeah. And he's played by uh, Tom Noonan, who's, if you remember him, he played... Uh, uh, Kane from RoboCop 2. Two, and he played he as the guy in the little wheelchair. and also in uh, Last Action Hero. Last Action Hero as Kane uh, as uh, the, the Ripper. The Ripper, the Ripper. I yeah, saying. yeah. Kane. And Ripper. Uh, basically, this movie deals with the Two Fairy, who's a famous uh, killer and all that, and who goes around and uh, basically he he's obsessed with the Red Dragon that he, that he has like uh, tattooed tattooed on his body. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, and. Uh, Pretty much, it's up to Will Grissom to try to look for him. But in order to find out where he's at, he enlists the help with Hannibal Lecter, who's re who's uh, played by Brian Cox. And unlike the later films, which we saw with Anthony Hopkins, Hannibal Lecter in this one is actually hardly even in it. He's actually yeah. only in it for about five minutes. Yeah, I think it was until Simon's Lambs made him a bigger role in a prison yeah. than in this film. Yeah. yeah, because in this one, at the time, they didn't really know what to do with the character. So Brian Cox's uh, version of the character, he comes across as a lot more like, you know, kind of, you know, quicker speaking. He's mm -hmm. He kind of comes across more casual, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. He's like a more like, he, he's insane, but he's a lot more reserved, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and basically, the movie goes along where Will is actually coming across basically the afterviews of all the killings happen. Especially, there's a part where he goes inside this this couple's house and, he, and he's looking at the the footage of when they were around mm. because it shows like photographs of having their fucking eyes cut out. Yeah, and it's a pretty gruesome shit yeah. in this film. Yeah. And I gotta admit, like for a movie, I just recently watched film for the first time and. I will say that, like, it is, to, to me, has a really great style with it. Because yeah. Michael Mann, who was known for Miami Vice and, and all them other movies. Uh, known for a lot of cop movies. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can tell that he really puts a lot of his style into this movie. And it's fucking great. Especially yeah. with the colors that he uses in and, a lot of the scenes. Yeah, they're very colorful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, basically, it all boils down to where uh, Will Grissom has to end up looking for the guy and everything. It becomes pretty much your... It kind of becomes kind of a slow burner for a while because he's just kind of investigating. And then the killer ends up actually having an... Uh, he ends up falling in love with this blind woman yeah. that he comes across. And uh, she's played by uh, the girl from Face Off, mm -hmm. uh, Karen Allen. Or, no, I'm sorry, not Karen Allen. Joan Allen. Joan, uh, Joan Allen, yeah. yeah. And uh, they form, like, a, a good bond that I enjoy. And what's really interesting is that... The guy doesn't like to, doesn't want to actually get involved with her because he actually kind of feels bad afterwards when he has sex with her, yeah, and stuff like that. So I, I do like that they give the killer kind of like a, a good realm of like, you know, personality for him. Yeah. Um, but overall, there's more I want to go into detail. But I mean, for the most part, from what I watched, from from what I remember of the movie. 
because it's mm-hmm. been a while since I last watched it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been about it, four it's years basically me, it's yeah. been it's if you've seen Red Dragon, it kind of ends the same. It kind of leads up to if Red Dragon was kind of I think like a reboot. It to was that. it was the same. It was based on the same novel. Yeah. So it was the uh, because you know after this pretty much nothing from this would continue in the other films. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean basically I, I'll say that why I really enjoy the film. Yeah. It's uh I I do like the film. It's it's definitely probably my I want to say it's my least favorite out of the entire franchise. It is mine, not because it was a bad movie, and because you know, uh, you know, Anthony Hopkins didn't begin with it. It's just the quality of the film felt very slow for my. Yeah, taste. I thought it the pacing me, yeah. was very, you know, dragged out a lot. I mean, I, I get that they're going for like a very realistic type of eye. Because I actually one of the other praises I do like is I do like the. Uh, I like the kind of like CSI kind of investigation they do because it's funny because a guy because guy was there playing CSI, CSI yeah. so yeah. It, it's funny that they would let her do that. So I do like the realism they're going for in the movie and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. just that I felt my only real thing was that it was a little too like uh, slow paced for me. I think what what the problem with this film was the fact that a lot of people didn't know this did really until years later when they heard when they got everybody seen Anthony Hopkins. And fucking uh, Ted is Ted Levine, Levine playing the uh, Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill. I feel like that alone right there sh- shadowed this yeah. movie completely out of the realm. Like a lot of people didn't know this existed. They thought Silence Lance began it all. Yeah, w- w- began the franchise, and that's not true. But Brian Cox, for, Cox was good as Hannibal. Like if he didn't have Anthony Hopkins around and he didn't do it, he would have been doable. Yeah, yeah. So overall, I would and say the killer was actually pretty. Yeah, good. I actually yeah. really enjoyed the killer in, in yeah. this. He was he was very fucking brutal, and I, he he had like a lot of like psychological stuff around him, like very yeah. similar to uh, like yeah, like he's crazy, crazy, so, yeah. yeah. Um, so overall, I mean, I would say like on a starter for the series, I give it kind of like a compelling grade on the film freaks meter. Yeah. So what what would you give it? Um. I would probably give it an average Joe on the Film Freaks meter, only because I do find there were some things I, I like. I said was like I liked about it, but I did kind of find it to be a little slow for my taste. And if I ever really go back to Anthony Hopkins, unfortunately, or the uh, the whole franchise of Hannibal Lecter, Anthony Hopkins is pretty much the only ones I would always go to. Yeah, Manhunter, I felt like I would single that one out because I just I, I don't know. I just felt like it was too slow for me. Yeah, I got you. But it was still good, like, nonetheless. Uh, the guy that played Kane and fucking Robocop 2 played, his performance was great. The guy who played, it was known for Grism. He was great as the main guy. Yeah. Yeah, so. And, um, yeah, and so, basically after Manhunter came out, believe it or not, I believe this one actually didn't do too well with the, as far as, like, box office-wise, because mm-hmm. they didn't really, they weren't really expecting it to be a franchise. They were just kind of just, you know, being a one-and-done movie. Yeah. Now, it wasn't until basically years later, around 1991, or what was it, 91, I think? Yeah. 91. 91, yeah. yeah when they decided to do a follow up to uh, Thomas Harris's novel uh, by doing Silence of the Lambs, which is technically a sequel, but it's actually kind of the official start of mm. the Hannibal franchise that most mainstream goer, mainstream people. Do you know any backstory of why they replaced everybody? Um, well, because I think what it was was that my thing, I think what it was was that uh, they weren't trying to do a sequel. They were just trying to make it as like a brand new movie. Did Brian Cox any? No, he, I, why I he don't think he, he was back. never offered the role. They, oh, I guess, because offered. they they decided to completely do a different movie, and yeah. they they had no ties with Manhunter. Uh-huh. So, um, with this one with Silence of the Lambs, when this came out, this was a big fucking deal because yeah. this movie was actually was one of the few one of the last known horror films that won the Academy Awards. When it yeah. came out. And this was a big deal when it first came out. And it's actually, I mean, not to foreshadow the other films that's in the franchise. This is the one that actually made it the biggest cult following it's got. Like, yeah. People refer to this movie, not the other ones. This is the one that is talked about. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. And it, it, rightfully so. This was an Academy Award winning movie. This broke records. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um Basically, the uh, this is the film that started the whole thing with Hannibal the Cannibal. Because yeah. in this story, we deal with Clarice Starling, who's portrayed 
by the wonderful Jody Foster, who's actually a trainee for the FBI for the FBI. And she ends up going to uh, get a case. Her first case assigned is yeah, to have her case, look yeah. for a guy named Buffalo Bill, who's known, played by played Ted, by Ted, Ted Levine. Levine. Yeah. And basically, he's a guy who likes to wear his women clothing and skin and skin, skin women's line. clothing, which is based off of Ed Gein. Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. Ed Gein. And yeah. it's the only way to, to try to help find him. Kind of like Grissom in the other film, she look goes to Hannibal Lecter for help, and she realizes that Hannibal. She yeah. understand. She comes to realize that Hannibal Lecter is actually in, in a is a uh, in, <clears throat> is in the uh, is it the kind of, asylum? it's like a prison uh, like a uh, more secluded hospital part of a uh, of a prison. Yeah, unit. it's in a hospital for the criminally insane. She goes there to study yeah. him and everything. And the first time I would admit, every time the, you see Hannibal for the first time, that that scene where he's fucking standing there is still fucking creepy. Yeah, and I'll tell you right now. No offense to Brian Cox, but man, did Anthony Hopkins nail this out of the fucking park. Yeah, and this is what made him huge. Yeah, like big time. This movie did. Yeah, this whole scene where he's like first standing there and he's just like, "Good morning." Yeah, and, and, and I'll tell you right now, the dialogue in this film is like fucking professional and like it's phenomenal at its finest yeah it is like top notch it is because yeah. throughout this entire conversation that she's having with with uh hannibal he's she's basically like you know trying to understand like where he's coming from and everything and she's trying to get more information about where the guy is and he won't give her a direct answer because he's trying to test her her background and everything yeah and test he, her intelligence and everything yeah, yeah which i which he mind fucks he's, he's yeah. playing mind games with her yeah which yeah. i really loved and we always get that famous line where he's like, he's like, somebody tried to test me, and I ate his liver with some fervor beans and a nice Chianti. <laughs> that, and then that one, uh, that other famous scene uh, was the part where uh, the 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 one thing was all the the guy next to Hamble Lecter is like, I smell your pussy, smell your cunt, cunt, yeah, cunt, yeah, yeah cunt, yeah. And yeah, that dude was fucking creepy too. Yeah, and it's pretty fucked up because Anthony Hopkins and like we said with Manhunter, they didn't really really dialogue with Hannibal Lecter's character much in that one. And this one he plays like a big deal for even though the movie movie focuses on a lot about Buffalo Bill and Jody Foster going after him. Yeah. It still has a lot of scenes with Anthony Hopkins. Oh yeah, in. definitely. And there's a part where he actually drives that fucking dude nuts for saying that. Like this is a like kind of like a coming of age thing, like not really a coming of age. I would say it's a build up, uh, story where you know these two meet each other and then he starts gaining more respect. Yeah, he starts to her. really gain that love for her because yeah. he actually starts to become fascinated by her. Yeah, and he actually fucking sticks up for her and he drives that one dude mad to kill himself. Yeah, without even touching him. Yeah, basically because he hears the guy uh calling her like trying to get after her and everything and then she, she uh once he hears that he tells her to come back and then he gives him uh he gives him info he gives her information about buffalo bill and basically i believe hannibal lecter says i'll help you on one case you come and talk to me yeah and they talk all like about deep shit about family and yeah. stuff like this it's fucking and i'll tell you right now this dialogue is so good i did i didn't even get bored with it it's no so, it's so captivating yeah. like i actually wanted to see like a whole movie just with yeah. them you know yeah um and basically the rest of the film deals while this is all happening we get introduced to buffalo bill oh. who's just who starts out kind of like a guy who's, who basically is kind of he's acting like he's wounded or something mm -hmm. and he comes across this 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 girl who is like? In, in she's everything. singing the, she's singing the American the Girl, Girl by from Tom, Tom Petty. Petty. This had a good soundtrack yeah. in it, yeah. And basically, she comes across him while he's moving something, and she she gets inside of his van and all that, and then he ends up, you know, taking her because he's actually uh, he's actually Buffalo Bill. Yeah. And so they end up going. He ends up taking her as a prisoner in this little hole that he has. And this is where basically the rest of the film, he's doing some weird shit. Where and by the way, I don't think we have to go too, too much detail. Let's just say that this scene, a lot of shit that Buffalo Bill does is actually iconic today. Yeah. It is referenced on movies, jokes with your friends. You better watch it. Buffalo Bill's going to get you. Yeah. Oh, shit. You're from Buffalo Bill Nation. 
Or does he put the lotion on, on his the skin? skin? I mean, just so much shit. <laughs> and then the music. Yeah. The song, Goodbye, Goodbye Horses. Horses by Q Lazarus. Yes, that was actually referenced in uh, Clerks 2. Yeah. I, it's been made fun of a lot in movies. I believe even Family Guy's even Yeah, they it. have, yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, you got him. You know, he's pretty much into wanting to dress like women. Yeah. Like, he does her clothes. He's pretty much becoming a transvestite. Yeah, like he his. wants yeah. to basically become a woman himself. Before he's doing the dance and stuff, it shows, like... <laughs> It's well, a, you got to think at this time of age, and that was actually a pretty graphic scene for yeah. a big box office movie to be in theaters. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. And, you know, he that's becomes so women. obsessed with, like, women's, with women and everything yeah. and, and all that. And th that whole part where he's, you know, doing the, where he's got the dog and stuff. He's <laughs> kissing yeah. him. He's like, oh. Yeah, and then uh, the part where he's like. He's like, put the fucking lotion in the, in the basket. basket. <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, um. Putting the lipstick. Oh, he's like, would, would you, you fuck me? I'd fuck, I'd fuck me hard. That's another iconic <laughs> yeah. line people talk about. Yeah. But overall, man, I will say, man, talk about that. This is like, this is like one of those rare movies where everybody was like, I mean, Ted Levine, man, he nailed that Buffalo Bill. Oh yeah, I'm surprised he never got nominated because he fucking deserved a supporting actor well, nomination. Well, what gets me is the fact that. This film, what he did with this movie, for what, uh, for this side killer, and I believe this guy went kind of missing and went to like shit straight to video movies for a while. Well, he was doing mainstream for a while. I just don't remember much of well, his mainstreams after that, well, other than Heat, Heat was years and, later. And uh, also, you had. Uh, He'll have eyes, but you gotta also think that he also went to projects like the fucking uh, Mangler. Yeah, a lot that, of that was straight the same, to yeah, fucking yeah. straight to fucking crap DVD. No one ever knew existed cheap movies. Oh well, yeah, true. and this guy should have been in stuff like fucking Pulp Fiction and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. I just don't understand but, his performance. Didn't get him really hardly a lot until years later. He that's what I'm saying. Places. But also, one of the biggest things I gotta say the most this movie really gets me every time is just which is funny. Not to go off subject just for a second. Two Fairy was played by Kane. Yeah. From RoboCop Two, Ted Levine was played in Silence of Lambs in the second part two movie. Both of them played in Heat. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh my god! <laughs> and that's same. Yeah, they both played in fucking Heat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. And then basically in this also one of my biggest things I love with this movie the most. Yeah. Man, you talk about fucking like gruesome shit that happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because it's all building up to, you know, what Cl Clarice having to track down the killer and stuff. Yeah. When we get to all the shit that goes down with Hannibal Lecter, once Hannibal Lecter finally gets fucking loose, oh, it gets fucking brutal. brutal especially man, he's a torturing motherfucker, dude. Where he, where he's like ah, where he fucking cuts ah, that dude's face yeah, off. Face and, off. And he Guts his fucking shit out and he hangs it on. Hangs him on that fucking cell thing. Yeah. And I'll tell you right now, that, and the way they do it kind of may, remind me of the Zuzu thing from Exorcist where he's just like, yeah. this was all foggy and the light. Yeah. Like, oh my God, that scene was disturbing. And then I uh, actually, and then you get to the final climax with her finding Buffalo Bill. Yeah. When she goes up to him and then she realizes something was not right with them and then. They go at it. He and, switches off the light. Yeah, man, and that scene pretty reminds good. me out of uh, "Don't Breathe." That that I think "Don't Breathe" kind of used inspiration same, yeah, for, for that. the old night vision yeah. shit. And he was playing the music, I believe, wasn't he playing that song? No, while it was, was all that? silent. Silent. That's what it was. It was all silent, which was actually pretty uh, creepy. Yeah. It brought more intention to the scene. So yeah. So, uh, but overall, I will say that you know, "Silence of the Lambs" for me to this day is one of my favorite uh, horror movies. It's definitely my yes. favorite. It's definitely the best. Uh, the uh, franchise of the franchise yes, for me. definitely for me uh, man. with that i give this a high fucking phenomenal yeah. grade i do give this a high film freaks. yeah i give this a high phenomenal grade film freaks meter i thought it was easily one of the top three best films of that year yeah and definitely in my top 50 60 best films of all time yes and it definitely yeah. it deserved all those oscars that it won especially yeah. best actress best actor and best picture yes and so, uh, so after this, um, we go on, we go on a hiatus, yeah, hiatus for a while because years. it wasn't until about, yeah, 10 years later when they decided to do a sequel to, well, basically a sequel, but also another adaptation of mm -hmm. Thomas Harris's novels, which was Hannibal, which was, was the actual 2001 sequel, 2001 sequel that came out, which my parent, my mom, 
she went and seen this when it first came out in theaters. Mm-hmm. Her and my dad did. I yeah. I missed it when it came I out. Went, I went and saw it. I remember sneaking in with a friend of mine. We saw this one. In theaters. Yeah. yeah, this one was one that I actually was really fucking hyped for because I was such a big fan of uh, Silence of the Lands, but I missed yep. it for so many years. And it wasn't until years later that I finally got a chance to watch it. And I'll say that because uh, this time this one was instead of Jonathan Le- uh, Demi who directed the first one. Yeah. Uh, really, Scott came in and directed this one, yep. which that that one that right there really you know p- kind of was really, a big deal. Big deal, yeah. And I gotta say, after upon seeing the movie recently, I don't think it's bad, but I will say it was quite a step down from Silence of the Lambs. Oh, dude, man, I think the fact that Silence of the Lambs was like groundbreaking. I mean, it's just, just a groundbreaking film, and I don't think you're ever gonna get near that fucking yeah. level and ever in the franchise. It does hurt any film from after, but I remember this film being a big deal when it first was coming out. It was a huge oh, fucking fuck deal. Yeah. It was a big promoted film, and then uh, um, and it still held its years. It was a big deal coming out, and uh, um, if you're not familiar with this, this takes place in in time wise. It's seven years have passed since Doctor Lecter has escaped. He escaped the uh, custody of the. Sounds of Lambs, and he's pretty much been living out in overseas. In yeah, this countries. time he's in, like, yeah. uh, Florence, Italy. Oh, yeah, that was the Italy one. Yeah, this is when he went over there. But he's been pretty much traveling around. Yeah. yeah. Florence, Italy. Yeah, because he was kind of in that, like, kind of like a Mediterranean setting and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And basically it deals where Charlie Star- or I'm sorry, Clarice Starling, a.k.a. A- a- changed by change, was changed by... Uh, Actress. Uh, actresses, which is really, which you can tell was kind of a weird choice because mm. they went from Jodie Foster, who made that Cruel Iconic, to Julianne Moore, which is a good choice, but you can see the difference of both movies night yeah. and day. And I don't think Julianne Moore was bad, but I didn't think she was... This is at her earlier years where she wasn't, I don't think, was on par in that type of level. Yeah. But they had to pick somebody, unfortunately, and she had to pick. And it had to do with uh, Jodie Foster pretty much thought she, this is when she's kind of, well, I, I this heard, is where she was kind of being like, uh, like I'm the best of the best and I, I've I heard this much. I heard it had to do, I, no, she asked I, a lot I think of fucking what money. That, and I think it also had to do with the fact that in the book of the, sh- of the Red Dragon, I'm yeah. sorry, not Red Dragon, Hannibal. She was... War, she didn't want to do the new one because they uh, they they did it the, because of the ending of the book. Because mm-hmm. she was... I, I think it was either the end of the book or the end of, the, the end of this movie. So I, it had something to do with that because... Not trying to skip around, but in the ending of the book of Hannibal, mm-hmm. um, they... Uh, they had it to where Hannibal Lecter actually hooks is literally hooks up with Clarice. So Jodie Foster felt like the original idea they had in mind, and that's probably why they changed it for the for the ending. Mm-hmm. That's what they were going to go with, and she felt like that was really against the idea because she feels like Hannibal Lecter and and uh, Clarice should not ever get together. That's true, and this has had a lot of complications with her. You know, you had that theory, then you had the rumors that she's hard to work with and behind screen. I hear they say mainly, she's kind of a yeah. bitch. But the one thing I do hear that is guaranteed, and this has pretty much been mentioned by everybody, was the fact that she asked a amount of money. Yeah, I think it was due to the salary sheet. Salary. I mean, she was. Th- I think her asking price was like ridiculous, somewhere around like thirty million or twenty million yeah. or some shit. And they were like, "Well, fuck, hell no." Yeah. And she's like, "Well, fuck you." I did hear that in the nineties after. She gained her popularity with other films inside with Silence of the Lambs at her peak. She thought she should be top pay. And yeah. a lot of people weren't going to pay what she was asking. So she didn't get a lot of roles for a while after that because they people did say she's hard to work with, too. Yeah. And so with this one, I to get into more of the story, I can say that... Uh, well, basically, because it deals with her... Clarice, who's now played by Julianne Moore, mm-hmm. uh, they're looking... F- they're looking for like a they're they're on a different case like right now in the movie in the beginning of it mm-hmm. where they're looking for like some kind of because it kind of starts out kind of like an action movie if you notice they're doing like a sting operation yeah no that is kind of weird yeah and then it deals with she gets a phone call from Hannibal Lecter and then she realizes that he's still on the loose yeah. and everything and then she tries to find a way to track him down and stuff yep. and while this is going on they also get this subplot that's involved where this guy. That's- yeah. Where who's like this inspector or something in Italy? He's yeah. also on the case looking for a known like killer 
that's around. That's been killing people in Italy, yeah. Yeah, and it calls the attention to Hannibal Lecter, who's basically on the loose now, and he's fucking killing, like, actually killing people in brutal ways. Yeah, and, and eating them and stuff. Yeah, yeah. With, and also, this this actually, this has to do with the fact that Chloe Sterling, she also has to deal with the fact that uh, there's actually a victim of Hannibal Lecter's that got away. And he and that's the one. People that you don't know, remember know this, Gary Oldman actually plays the victim. Mm-hmm. He's actually the guy who has the really fucked up face in this. We mm-hmm. got, he, actually, he actually ate his own face off. Yeah, ate his face, yeah. And it, yeah, a lot of people, and you know what the fucking funny thing is about that? Is I didn't realize that was Gary Oldman until two years ago. Yeah, that's I what I'm saying. I had no fucking, fucking idea, idea it was him. And his acting, not to mention his face and the makeup work and everything, still holds up. Yeah, I thought he was fucking great. And he was disgusting looking, but I did not know that was him. Yeah, because it, it's a, there's a backstory involved where he, yeah. when he met uh, Hannibal Lecter in the past, basically Hannibal Lecter made it to where he gave him a piece of glass and he cut his whole fucking face open and then ate it. Yeah, yeah, and it was pretty. They go on. They don't like show the whole detail, but man, they show in the flashback part, and it's fucking yeah. gruesome. It is a very gruesome thing. Yeah, yeah. and so it's basically uh, Gary Oldman's character is trying to get after Hannibal Lecter while this happens. So the movie kind of goes in kind of a convoluted like. I also that uh, part where plot. he gets the inspector in France. Yeah. Uh, or Italy, whatever, and fucking slashes his stomach open, yep, that and then really hangs him out of the spills his guts, literally, yeah, out like to the by crowd. the mannequin type thing, yeah. type of ordeal, and his whole fucking intestines just spill the fuck out. It's like, damn, yeah. And then basically, it deals with, uh, yeah, this is what I will say. Like, it does up the gore a lot this time, and yeah. I, I will admit, it, like. It does have a lot of good entertainment on that aspect. And this is the first one that we've seen that didn't involve a side killer. No, the, well, besides Gary Oldman's character, because yeah. Gary Oldman's kind of playing like an anti-villain. He's basically a guy who's more fucked up than Hannibal is because, well, in the past he's been known for he's basically a child molester. Yeah, because he's known for like raping kids and stuff. Yeah, he is a sick son of a bitch, but. I mean, the but focus also, on a, on a side he, villain with a weird name, they don't do that. This right. Movie. This one, the only thing they do is that because Hannibal is pretty much on the loose, it's mainly yeah. dealing with him and Gary Oldman's character who wants to kill Cannibal for his own good yeah, and stuff. So there's dealing with that. And uh, as the movie goes along, it just it becomes pretty much one of those movies that I watch it and I'm, I'm interested with it. But mm-hmm. at the same time, it seems like the tone of it just feels kind of off, if you notice. Well, here's like, the thing. I like the part where he's fucking with her in the carousel, and he's there. He comes yeah. to back to the where he, where she's at, fucking with her and looking for her stuff. And I'll tell you right now, that scene where he made that dude eat his own brains, Yeah, that was a pretty fucking okay, gruesome scene. To lead up to that, also, we forgot to mention, yeah, Ray Oda plays in this movie as the guy who's like keeping track of Julianne Moore's character and stuff. Yeah. Apparently, there's uh, he gets obtained by, later on in the film, well, before we in later on in the film, there's a scene. Well, before we get to all that, yeah, he's a guy that, if you've seen the pr- movie, he, he's the one who eats his own brains and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but before we get to that, basically, you know, that whole there, it all leads up to that climax where we see that Gary Oldman ends up taking both Hannibal and and Clarice, like like you know, he wants to feed them, feed them to the pigs and stuff. Yeah. And we get that really gruesome scene where Hannibal gets loose and he fucking puts uh, Gary Oldman inside that 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 uh that pig area and they start fucking eating his uh, yeah face and yeah. chewing and all that it man it was brutal or no yeah. it was, I think it was bison I think no it, it was, was not bison was bison's boars. are big ass uh, they're boars I think hogs. they were boar yeah I think yeah they, were they weren't by bison's are fucking like buffaloes okay right, they're man. like boars or something like yeah, that yeah they're pigs of a breed of yeah. pigs yeah yeah and then. Pretty much, we get that really gruesome scene afterwards where uh, Clarice is at the Hannibal's house and he sees uh, Ray Liotta's like fucking eating his own brains and shit. Yeah, he's making him eat and he's cooking like a nice thing for him. And he's like, uh, pretty much, he treats like Clarice like a lo- like yeah, the he- princess she is. This is like the one person he does not want to hurt. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's so like, and abs- that's th- if, in the book. That's supposed to be like a big deal because yeah. in the end, uh, he she ends up putting. Uh, Hannibal onto his like handcuffs and stuff and he actually literally cuts his own fucking hand off to get away now in the book I haven't read the book but I heard yeah. the ending was changed because in the end of the book she actually ends up going on the run with him and becoming his lover 
Yeah. So I could, that's probably the reason why Jodie Foster didn't want to come back because she didn't like the ending of the book. Yeah. But anyway. Anyways, we get pretty much the ending where, where he's on the plane. Well, he, um, they pretty much, he escapes and it really doesn't have no really final fight. He just pretty much escapes and it's on a plane and he has a little piece of uh, the brain from, from Ray Liotta. Liotta's brain. And this little Asian kid comes up to him. He's like, he's like, that looks good. Good, and he, he's like, no, you don't want that. You want this over here. And the co- the boy, little boy, ex- assists. He's like, yeah, I want it. And he goes, okay. He's like, open up, open up. <laughs> and it, it, I like how it goes to that poster of the yeah. poster of the movie at the end of the credits. Yeah, where yeah, it zooms in on him. Zooms in on him. Yeah. yeah, that was good. I thought that was a great yeah. fucking ending. Yeah. Yeah. And it, mean, ma- it makes you kind of question, like, okay, is he going to be, like, his assistant in the future? Because yeah. the way the kid's, like, you know, kind of in there is like... Yeah. Is you he- want to... And uh, not to the, not the hurry and rush this and get uh, go on the off-topic. topic. <clears throat> this is actually the last time, even though we got a couple more movies going to, this is the end of Hannibal. Right? Yeah, this is where he's still on the run. Everything else after this is a prequel. Yeah, yeah, but also, so basically, are we ever gonna get closure to this? No, nope, I don't think so. Because <laughs> Anthony Hopkins is still kicking. Though I do say that that Thomas Harris is still he's actually is writing another book of Hannibal, but I don't know if it's gonna yeah. close the series where it kills Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, I don't know, but whatever the case is, a year later. Oh well, before we get to that, um, yeah. Overall, though. I'll say that while this one was not nearly as good as fucking uh, Silence was, yeah, I still I still have some 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 good things I I, I like about it. And I, mm-hmm. I still overall I enjoyed it, but it's definitely it's definitely probably my second fa- least favorite of the franchise. Yeah. So it's not as like I, I'd say I'd probably put like a maybe a, a high average Joe. Maybe I will probably go a very 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 low compelling grade. Yep. Fair enough. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's been a while for me to compare how it's aged because I haven't really watched it in such a long time, but I still remember the movie vividly. Yeah, I yeah. got you. Um, so and, yeah, and, and then literally a year later after that, we get another film of Hannibal Lecter, which is Red Dragon, which is actually technically a remake of Manhunter, but it's yeah. it's basically like similar to it. It's basically a second adaptation of the book. Yeah, which by the way, this film actually was one of the only times. That came out so abruptly fast from the one I remember got iconic theater release. I actually didn't notice this. Notice this film didn't exist until like six years later or five years. I later. remember it came out, but I, I don't remember. I remember nothing seeing much the advertisements. Like, I didn't on, know on TV. See the the advertisements wasn't as strong as it was with Hannibal. Well, yeah, because Hannibal was like heavily, heavily promoted, and I th- and I think that this one was uh, because they thought that it felt rushed because it because well, it's really was a year. year later, yeah, yeah, it was one after another, yeah. In fact, I think while we were watching Hannibal in theaters, this was already being made. Yeah, I think yeah. it was, and basically yeah. this one it deals it's much much like Manhunter. It's basically the same story as Manhunter, so we don't want to go about on, two. It's, it's about two fairy. Again. Yeah, it's about the two yeah, fairy again. This but time, this one's Ed Norton is the <clears throat> yeah. prison spot. Yeah, yeah. This one is once again based on the novel of, of uh, Red Dragon of the same yeah. name, and it deals with actually what's interesting about this one is that they expand more upon it. So mm-hmm. on this one. Instead of like Manhunter, where it starts out with the Two Fairy, it actually starts out with you have uh, Edward Norton actually has a, a prequel part with uh, Hannibal Lecter, yeah. where basically Hannibal Lecter has an encounter with Edward Norton's character Will Grissom, uh, where basically Edward Norton knows who Hannibal Lecter is. He finds out who he is. Then he, they have this thing where he gets stabbed by Hannibal Lecter, and yeah. then uh, he ends up shooting Hannibal several times. And when that happens, because they're like, talking like casual, more like scientist philosophy and stuff. Yeah. And then like Hannibal starts getting a more deeper shit about what he does, and then fucking he tries to kill him, and then it just came out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Which the, when they did that was when I was little when I first saw this scene, I was like, they fucking just kill Hannibal Lecter. That's yeah. weird. I guess this was the sequel to Hannibal well, all along. the funny thing is, I didn't know this film exists for so many years, but whenever I did, I thought it was a uh, movie, I thought it was continuing after Hannibal. That's what I thought, and because the opening. I was like, okay, I'm not getting where this is going, because there's no Clarice, there's no this, there's no that. Then I w- happened to look up on Wikipedia, and noticed that the Manhunter and this had the same biography, like the Wikipediaography of storyline. I'm going, oh, it's a remake of that. Yeah, it's a prequel. 
Yeah, it's a pre- it was a prequel of uh, all the films, but it's also kind of like retelling of the same it's, story. Yeah, it's a retelling, but to be an actual true prequel to Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. Um, so, basically, this one is same story where you have... This time, you get Ralph Fiennes playing Two Fairy, and I'll admit, like, Ralph Fiennes, he dude was a pretty good fucking, like, villain in this. I mean, and it's not only that, he kind of looks like uh, the dude from Kane. Yeah. He played Kane, yeah. Yeah, and in this one, he, he deals with... He has a lot more, like, problems in this one, like, psychologically wise because I feel like in this one, he has, like, a lot of, like, mother issues because... He, he has, like, these weird... Doesn't he go, like, have, like, weird voices in his head? Yeah, he, uh, they, like, a psych... It shows, goes more deeper in a psychological yeah. Uh, approach, yeah, and stuff. Not only that, this movie also stars Emily Watson, Philip Phil Seymour Hoffman, Hoffman, Harvey Cattell, and Mary Louise Parker. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Just to name some few. Yeah. yeah, and they had a great cast and everything, and I, I actually enjoyed Edward Norton. Yeah. I don't really want to make comparisons with this and Manhunter because but, yeah. I'd have to really sit down and review both of them i just want to judge it by, but the by movie its movie I, I still think this was a solid uh adaptation of the book um and i, I think that it really did push it, i actually really enjoyed the, the more stuff they had with hannibal lecter in this because in this one we see that hannibal lecter has more screen time than yeah. compared to manhunter because Man in this Hunter, one yeah. edward norton has to look into Manhunter uh into hannibal lecter several times throughout yeah especially scenes where you actually see him literally getting on the phone with finding out uh He's actually calling fucking Two Fairy yeah. and shit, which happened in the manner, but he, he goes beyond that because he's actually trying to get Edward Norton. Yeah. So, um, with this one too, it also d- dives more into a lot of the brutal shit that we we see as well. Like, uh, there's actually a part where he, the friend, the 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 two guy actually has. The Phil Seymour Hoffman all tied up and shit. And he starts, like, biting him and shit like that. Yeah. And then he goes to, like... And then he ends up having him go on fire right down the road and shit. Yeah. So... So, other than that, I mean, there's more I want to go into detail, but... What do you think about the blood and all yeah, that Yeah, it's all pretty good. I, yeah. I thought it was pretty fucking brutal. Yeah, it, um, it, it holds its brutality up very well. Um, If I had, like, really any minor things, I, I probably would say would be, like... They could have, like, uh, actually, no, I, I really, I don't really have really much to, like, go over complaint-wise on the fact that it's really just the same movie as Manhunter. It like, really is. And I mean, other than I the fact that they had the new stuff with Hannibal Lecter. I do realize that this movie just came and gone so quickly, like, compared to the, well, you know, you had Silence of the Lambs and Hannibal were so phenomenal. Yeah. And then this film just abruptly felt like it disappeared quickly. Yeah. From a lot of people's views. It did, views definitely. Because but it I, came out so quickly. And, but I, I still I still highly enjoyed it. It was definitely It's one. enjoyable, but I just felt like, you know, I think because I still even know it, it has a lot of, it's pretty fucking solid. I do feel like you got Sons Lands and, I mean, to be fair, Hannibal, for the most part, uh, for most views, still those two films overshadow the every other movie they've ever done. Yeah, I so. will say that like with Red Dragon, I kind of like a little better than Hannibal was, but um, it, it's definitely one that. But it is better than I felt like Red Dragon was better than a uh, Manhunter. Uh, but I can't, like you said, you can't compare. I can't really it. compare because they yeah. tell the same story. But if we're looking at like on just the Hannibal Lecter films, mm-hmm. I, I I like Red Dragon more than Hannibal the 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 second one. Yeah, I do like some aspects. It's a fifty fifty thing for me. Um, uh, but I thought Edward Norton was fantastic. Yeah, he was. It. He was great. And yeah. I I also enjoyed uh, the relationship that builds on with this one. I mm-hmm. did kind of like the relationship a little better in the original though, the mm-hmm. one with uh, with him and the girl. I mm-hmm. thought it worked a little better in the original movie yeah. compared yeah. to the remake. Remake, yeah. So that was my only little minor things I had with the remake was that they didn't they didn't do it like too well compared to the original. But no, other than that, I, my final grade, I'll probably give it like a. Mm, I'd probably give it, like, a maybe a compelling. Yeah, I'm going to give it a compelling grade as well. So, all right, fair enough. And yeah. for those, and also, after this, basically, we went on a hiatus, Rob, because after this was Until pretty much, we didn't realize that they were, I didn't think they would make any more after this, since it was this was a prequel. Come to find out, they're doing a, another fucking prequel that came out, which was in 2007, called Hannibal Rising. Rising which doesn't bring doesn't Anthony bring Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins, because it's, I, this yeah. is at his very young age. Yeah, this now, is, yeah. keep in mind, I've seen this movie, but I kind of skipped over parts, so I haven't, like, there might be yeah. scenes I've missed out on. 
So he'll have to tell you, kind of fill me in on it a little bit because this yeah. is one that I, I hardly like really remember much. Yeah, this one was um, a lot different. Like we said, Anthony Hopkins doesn't come back. Um, and uh, this replaces a, a, a new guy going. This is more of a storm. A, a more telling story about when Hannibal Lecter was like starts out when he's like I think he's like six, seven, eight years old, and this yeah. is during the World War Two era. Or and one, if you guys uh, know, it was World War Two. This okay. was been Nazis and all that stuff. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, I think if he, he's mentioned it in his other previous movies, uh, <laughs> that he's like from Lithuania mm -hmm. or some shit like that. Lithuania, yeah, yeah Polish type. Country, yeah, he Russian. mentioned that, I believe, yeah. in, uh, Luthien, I, I think it was in Silence of the Lambs, yeah. Yeah, they mentioned well, that. it takes place in Luthania, and he's at this college, he's at this little school, and he's like this pretty, he's like seven, eight years old at the time, and um, basically, while this is going on, the war is going, is breaking out and all that stuff, um, and it's basically the Soviet Union, the Russians, this is running over the, the Baltic region, where He's fight, uh, the Russians are fighting uh, Hitler's uh, invasion in the in the region. Yeah, and uh, basically, the, it starts destroying pretty much the school and all that stuff. And everybody's getting pretty much misplaced and getting all that stuff. So basically, everybody um, kind of escapes. Um, um Basically, um, when the war breaks out and destroys the school and everything, Hannibal Lecter and his, uh, is now, I think, around 13, 14, or 16. You know, not really. He's upper teenager going to college type age. And, or, no, this is when he's a kid still. Um, cut that out. He's a kid still. And basically him, his, uh, his sister and his mom and dad, they are, they all go to hiding out in this little camp thing. Yeah. It's, it's like, a, like a family lodge that they had deep in the woods in yeah, Louisiana I that, yeah. and stuff. And this is the part where they're pretty much hiding out for the war. And while this is going on, this deals with a lot of, you know, we're going to do with food, we're hungry, what we're going to do and so yeah. on and so forth and stuff. And basically while they're like kind of going by the years of them growing up, while the war just keeps raging on around them, they hear it in the skies and all that shit. There's a lot of scenes where Russians and the the, the Nazis are fighting back and forth and all that stuff, and pretty much, uh, Nazi the Russians get kind of destroyed in this little area, and basically you get um, the soldiers that come in, and they basically kill the family, and they leave just the the daughter and Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, just. They're the only ones alive. And um, basically, these Nazis come up, and they basically are using their home to kind yeah. of survive and stuff. And um, I remember this one had Richard Brake, uh, Brake in it, if you guys don't remember him. From yeah, the, he played uh, yeah. Doomhead from uh, 31. Yeah. He's pretty fucking sick because he's the main mil he's the main d villain motherfucker in this that like, causes the shit. Yeah. And basically, those Nazi guys, they're pretty much going in this... They pretty much don't know what the fuck to do anymore because they're hungry because the Russians are coming in on their uh, their territory yeah. and getting ready to kill them. And the, uh, the Nazis are like, what are we going to do for food? And they end up cooking his sister. Ew, yeah, uh, I remember sister. that. Yeah, it was fucking gruesome. And they were fucking made him eat, like they're eating her and stuff. And he kind of fucked him up in a way, but in a more kind of gratification type way like he should have been. Yeah. But... This go now after this happens, this goes like years later where he's like in his early twenties now and he's basically in like he's going to study to become a doctor. Yeah. He's in a middle college. And this takes place, I think, in like France or somewhere. Yeah. I think it is. I can't re fucking remember uh the setting. I think it was France. Yeah, it was France. Uh where he's he meets this I remember this Japanese girl he meets, and basically he's learning from her and and uh, he, he's staying with her or something to learn schooling for being a doctor and all stuff. And basically, I'm not going to go in too much detail from shot for shot. The whole film is basically Hannibal looking for the guys responsible for eating his little sister. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and on top of that, there's also this inspector that's been investigating the case uh, surrounding because 
if I remember, like, from what I remember mm. watching of it, he's also killing students around there, too, that yeah. are, like, fucking with them. Or something. Well, no, no, no it was not. like, a, yeah. no, cut that out. It, 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 there's also this inspector that's also looking for him on the case as well. That's, yeah. that's, uh, and then. Because the people are, that he, he killed a couple people that were part of this school that was part of the Nazi people that are hiding and changed their names and all that stuff. Yeah. And some of the scenes that happen, Inspector finds dead bodies coming out everywhere. And he's pretty much investigating, which leads him into thinking to at the school where Hannibal Lecter is and, th- and questioning him. Because Hannibal Lecter's got this. It's not really a school now. It's like a facility where this Japanese woman took him in. And she t- trains him how to be a soul, like a good, can fight, can do like he makes him very classical kind of guy. He becomes yeah. as, when he's Anthony Hopkins, and they really b- build up on that. And she gives him like a facility where he's learning medical because he's yeah. a doctor and stuff like that. And then like this is where like they think Hannibal Lecter's up to no good, yeah, and stuff. So they start investigating, but pretty much the whole film is relies on him slowly. Tracking down everybody responsible for his sister's death. Yeah, and, and he kills him in fucking, fucking gruesome, gruesome ways, ways especially man. especially that part where he has that dude like out in the forest and shit. And yeah. he like, what was he doing? Was he, like tying him across like the? Yeah, um, uh, they tied him in this thing. Ah, goddamn, he tied him in the the tree. His throat around the tree, his head, and then a wrap around the tree, and then he made the horse where he slaps it. Yeah, run and. and and choke him to where his eyeballs pop out. Yeah, shit was that shit was fucking great. And he's all like tortured. He's like, you said my uh, sister tastes so good and sweet. Yeah. Or, or um, then you said something about, he killed one guy that was part, that did his sister in, that ate her sister, but he made a comment about the girl, about the Japanese girl. He said, uh, Jet's pussy go this way. <laughs> Slant uh. ways and stuff, so he killed that dude. He goes, you said, what Jet's pussy go where? Yeah. And so on and so on and so forth. Well, anyways... Not to really dig in deep and stuff. He finally pretty much knocks every one of them off, pays them all back by, you know, and stuff. And it does have a good climax when he finally gets the final dude, which is played by Blake dude from uh, Doomhead. Yeah. And he starts eating his face, and um, he screams, but he screams, and he's like, ah, and stuff like that. And this is actually where the mask is introduced, too, the famous. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you guys remember, yeah, I, remember. I, I didn't get. I, I guess like I forgot that. about that part. Yeah, yeah. I don't think but it was in there much, but uh, yeah, he, this is where he decides where he loses it, and he fucking starts eating mm-hmm. the face and stuff. And he's just like just losing it and shit, and pretty much uh, the movie's over with. And I haven't seen this movie in such a long time, but I'll tell you right now, when I first saw this film. I actually thought it was actually pretty damn good yeah, for what it was. From what I watched of it, because remember, it's been a long time since so I really paid attention. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed parts of it, but mm-hmm. it's been such a long time that I can't. I have to really watch it recently to really judge it. But if mm-hmm. I, from what I do remember of it, I remember thinking like, okay, this is good. It's a good little you know prequel. It tells the story of how he was. You're not going to so, get Anthony Hopkins right, in this because but it's, it's a prequel, it's a but. Yes. I still like the guy who played the Hannibal. The, I I'll tell you right now, phenomenal. that kid was a fucking phenomenal yeah. Hannibal. He even has that fucking sophisticated accent, that that genuine, like I said, sophistication that brings, like, it, he speaks so well fluent yeah. and smart. And it reminded me of Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And also, yeah. it, it just, I like the way it, it went along where you see the stuff that Hannibal is known for. And you know why he became who yeah. he was, which I thought was pretty cool. And if I had any complaints, I will say that once it gets to the part where he's, like, living with the Asian girl and learning how to sword fight, just pretty much just doing, like, more, like, a more settled, where you old people like this part and stuff, it is very dragged out, and it can get slow. Yeah, that's probably times. the parts where I was feeling a little bored with at times, yeah. yeah. I, I, that's what I remember. Um, but, so, but overall, from what I remember, from what I do remember watching of it, yeah. I'd probably give it, like, mm, I don't know, probably kind of the same grade I gave Red Dragon, about a compelling grade. Uh, it's a compelling grade, man. I, I had the cool uh, box cover copy of it. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I pretty much, I, I, I thought it was a pretty solid film. I know it isn't royally liked by fans. Yeah, I know a lot of, especially the fact that it's kind of pointless since it's a prequel and all. But yeah. for what I mean, I, I remember it thought it wasn't too bad. Yeah. Um. Now, after this came out, this they were pretty much done with the franchise for movies with Hannibal. 
And then basically, uh, a few years uh, recently, uh, the last few years, they had this. This yeah. they actually had a television show on t- called Hannibal. It's still, I think, believe it's going on right now. No, today. it's actually been Is canceled. It, did it finally get? Yeah, canceled? it got canceled a few years ago. I think. Yeah. Oh, was, 2015. Damn, I thought yep, it, it got I heard, canceled. Okay, well then that means somebody re- uh, had they're bringing it back. They're trying to. Yeah, basically, this TV series uh, has came mad- out 2013. Yeah. Mads Mikkelsen, if you remember, he played the uh, the villain from uh, Casino Royale. Yeah. Um, he plays uh, Hannibal in this, and I haven't seen the show, but from what I heard, he's actually pretty phenomenal. And basically, it's a retelling of, of how Hannibal like start out in Manhunter, mm-hmm. and because uh, it deals with the the Will Grisham character again. Yeah. And uh, it, they're kind of redoing it like they did with Red Dragon and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but for, but they're doing like their own spin on it. And I also believe that they even pretty much remake it most of everything, like even the Rising, all that. It, it deals with yeah. the entire remake from beginning when he's a kid all the way up. Yeah, yeah. but they, they're, they're trying to do like their own take on it, yeah. um, so to speak. Because I don't even know, they may have, a, I think they also introduced Clarice in this show too, but I can't remember. Yeah. But anyway, I haven't seen it before I heard it is a phenomenal show. Um, now, why did it get canceled though? Low ratings, I guess, because NBC, ABC, I think it was NBC that it was on. Well, they, that's they, the uh, problem. That's a fucking watered down, uh, neutered station. Well, from what I heard, I mean, I haven't seen it, but I, I did. I think I heard that they actually got away with a lot on that show. I, that's like the, something I think it should have been Netflix, though. Yeah, definitely. If they ever bring it back, I would be interested because yeah. it, the the show does have me kind of curious now that I think about it. You know what? If you think about it, you got Mickelson and you got Hans Hopkins, which owns the role, obviously, and Brian Cox. For what it's worth, all three of them never did. Yeah, they never be bad. They all not, and even the boy. The yeah. boy was even fucking great. I'm saying they all brought their unique yeah. take on it. It's even like, the it's like seven Joker. year old that ain't even mentioned much. In the categories where the twenty something year old and the so and so and so and so, all yeah. the other ones, he even did good. That's what I'm saying. Like it's like the Joker; they all bring their own unique take on it. Yes, exactly. But uh, so, but and, and, and we don't know if we're ever going to get closure with Anthony Hopkins. I do feel like I hate to say this, but it's being blunt as possible. The dude don't got much time. I yeah, mean, you were looking at a guy in his what? I think eighties. Eighties. No, I think he's, no, he's eighties. Well, let's just say that he's getting to the end of life, and I would. It's the only franchise that's done everything good. It just hasn't had a closing yet. Yeah, I wish they would do a final movie with Hannibal and mm-hmm. actually close it out. And if they don't do a book, ask permission to kill him off in person in a movie. Yeah, and then end it from there. Have somebody kind of do their own take on it. Maybe somebody can come up with something creative. Yeah, and close it out so we can at least end that, and then we could real we could just feel happy. I'm happy. I just want Anthony Hopkins to close it out. He's just one movie away from closing it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But overall, um, that's pretty much our final thoughts. Now, yeah. for those of you who have also seen the Hannibal franchise uh, uh, movies and the TV series, uh, r- let us know in the comments below of what you guys thought about it. And if you like what you see here, you can feel free to like and subscribe to our channel and check out more of our other reviews here and, and our channel and our website at filmfreaks.com. Mm-hmm. And we'll be seeing you in our next review. All right, later. We'll see you later. All right.